Hello, welcome to this Why Study talk. Um, I'm going to be talking about why you should study biotechnology at the University of Manchester. Um, so my name's Harry, I'm currently a biomaterials PhD student at Manchester. Um, so that's kind of a related field and um, I will talk a little bit how I got into that as well uh, later on in the presentation. So firstly, yeah, who am I? Current PhD student at Manchester. Um, I'm researching uh, graphene for use in tissue regeneration. Um, maybe you've heard of graphene. That's a, a picture of it there, or a picture, but a sort of a diagram. Um, it's really the archetypal 2D material. So it's one flat layer of carbon atoms um, arranged in this hexagonal honeycomb lattice. Um, and so really throughout my bachelor, my undergraduate degree, which I'm going to be mainly talking about, I developed specific interests, uh, which led me on to graphene and how it can be used in tissue regeneration. And so, like I already mentioned, I completed my undergraduate degree at Manchester, um, that was biotechnology and that was in 2018. Uh, and I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about that program and why you should do it, why it's good, and how you can apply. Um, so, yeah, it's essentially is a narrower version of biology, really, that focuses on the sort of useful aspects of biology. So that can include things like genetic engineering, molecular biology, drug development, pharmacology, um, and it even included some basic business modules. Um, so if you're interested in how you can maybe apply biology in industry, it's a good course for that. Um, and when I say useful, that really means industrial applications. So how can we, for example, produce biofuel from algae or how can we engineer a bacteria to produce a certain protein that might be useful in industry, such as insulin. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's really one of the main reasons I was attracted to the to the program because of its applicability um, and its focus on how it can be translated, how the re how research and what you learn can be translated into the real world. So it, the program also, uh, another great reason to do it is that ha you have an opportunity to take an industrial placement. This is um, about a, a half a year abroad in the second year, or it doesn't have to be abroad, but many people choose to go abroad can be at a university or in a company, an industrial partner, doesn't really matter um, as long as Manchester has a, a, a professional sort of link with that place, but they, they have so many connections that I'm sure you'd find somewhere interesting to go. Um, so yeah, and that's a chance really to gain great experience outside of an academic environment. So that's gonna be really good for your CV. Um, a lot of employers will look at that how much experience you've had outside of university so the chance that you can you can go somewhere else you can learn potentially something very different to what you're doing on your on your program it's going to look really good for employers so that's another great reason to choose the um this program biotechnology at manchester so this is just a little timeline to give you an idea of how the the course goes because i know I wouldn't have known this probably before I advise and a lot of people don't uh, necessarily know the um, structure of a degree. So basically it starts with application via UCAS. You've probably heard of UCAS, your sixth form or um, college will be able to will definitely help you with that. And they'll probably have sessions um, in order to allow uh, for you to look through it, look at the courses and apply and they'll show you how to do that. That usually involves a personal statement and things like that, and you select your universities and courses. So then in the first year of this course, it's really quite broad and it's the same for, um, I think, all the biological sciences degrees. So this is really giving you a foundation in the fundamental um, biological sciences that you need. So that includes things like biochemistry and molecular biology. So this is year one. Um, you also have practical sessions that run throughout 
the three years. Um, this, is, this is basically lab work where you get to use different equipment and understand or try to understand in practice the stuff you might have learned in theory in the lectures. And you also have tutorials that run throughout the whole program. Um, these are small groups um, once a week or once every two weeks um, where you, you get together with a tutor who's an academic or a researcher or, or somebody related to the field. And they'll give you small, small tasks. They might be essays to complete for the following week or small group projects or reading assignments, but reading as in articles, research that's come out. Um, and they'll also train you sort of more generally for, so when you do these essays, they're a good, good building blocks really for the exams that you'll have. So at the end of year one, you do have exams, um, mostly uh, multiple choice, so not, not too much to worry about and then when you go into year two this is where the course kind of specifies it narrows and it, it takes more of a focus on biotechnology rather than just pure uh, more foundational biology so at the end of year one you do actually get the opportunity to switch between courses and because they're they've all had the same teaching up till then so you've all got the same foundational knowledge and in year two, you get the opportunity to write a medium sized dissertation. So this is a long written project on a topic of interest uh, for you. So I did um, biofuels from algae or something for you, but there's there's a vast number of, of uh, different different options for that. And they'll give you titles and you can select your favorites and hopefully you'll get get your first or second or third choice. So this year also includes units like plants for the future and omic technologies which is omic is just a um just the sort of half word of all the different omic words which are so the proteomic for example includes proteins and transcriptome uh, includes the transcribed dna so it's basically just um applied or practical molecular biology so this is this is what i mean when i say a real biotechnology focus so how can it be used what what, what are the useful aspects of this biology um and at the end of year two you have exams again some are they're sort of a blend they're not multiple choice but they're short answers and maybe some short essays as well and then the final year year three um it's really more of a consolidation so there are similar essay um essay and short answer based uh, exams to the second year um but there's also a general essay exam with very broad questions that, are, that are essentially just test your your biotechnological knowledge up to this point so you can write you can really write about anything um the questions are very broad and you can can um write about something that you've learned a lot about over the years, something that you know a lot about. Um, and you also get the chance to do a project. Most people choose to do a lab-based project. So this is working in a lab. Um, uh, so it's, it's practical work. A literature review precedes that. So that so allows you to understand the current state of the, um, of the research. And then following that, um, you do a write-up. So that's a fairly long write-up. but nothing to worry about and then finally you get your graduation which is in the summer of the year that you that you finish so that's just a little outline of how the program goes and if you do uh, an industrial placement that's in your second year the first half of your second year so i did i did mention the practical elements this is lab-based stuff um it's the reason a lot of people do a degree like this i think um, you get the chance to learn various techniques, various things that can be applied um, in industry and, and, and allow us to understand biology more so. So that includes PCI, which you've probably heard of, the polymerase chain reaction. So this is a way of cloning and expanding DNA fragments. DNA sequencing, so understanding the, um, the actual uh, sequence of the DNA. So what, what is the code and what is it telling us? Um, so, so through that we can we can see what the DNA is and we can identify it. 
um, and various other techniques. So some people do dissection and histology, that's the study of tissues. Depends uh, precisely which program you're on at this point. If you're on biotechnology, you might not do so much dissection. Um, and also EEGs and ECGs, uh, things like that. There's a lot of hands-on experience. And immunofluorescence microscopy, this is just basically um, the, the utilization of fluorescent tags. Uh, it's immuno because it's based on antibodies of the immune system and it allows us to visualize things via the fluorescence through microscopy. So a lot of practical stuff that you can, uh, you will get the opportunity to, to enjoy. So a little bit about the entry requirements. So they're, they're kind of flexible. So you, you'll see if you go on the websites, three A's to A, B, B. So you, you can sort of be anywhere in between that. And it has to include two of biology, chemistry, physics, or maths. And, and the offer that is given to you is based on your predicted grade. So if you're, if you're predicted three A's, um, you'll get that as your offer if you are if you are given an offer. And this is, it may seem unfair, but um, I think it's basically so that um, it doesn't encourage students to sort of, sort of um, uh, take their foot off the pedal in the final, final few months of their, of their studies. And you will also have to do a semi-formal interview. It's nothing to worry about. They just ask you, really your motivations for the course, why you'll be good at it, um, what you'll get out of it. And then during that interview, if you if you pass, which I'm sure most people will, you'll be given an offer. So just to put it in context, what I mentioned earlier, your offer is based on your predicted grades. So mine was three A's, but I only got A, A, B, but I was still offered. So um, I wouldn't worry too, too much about the offer. Um, that you get as long as you come within that boundary, as long as you do pretty well, as long as you don't slip out um, below ABB, you, I wouldn't worry too much about that at all. Um, it's very achievable and the interview is nothing to worry about at all. So like I mentioned before, you apply via UCAS as per normal. Um, your college or sixth form will be, will be showing you how to do that, I'm sure. Um, it's a very simple process. You, you need to write a personal statement, um, which basically describes why you're interested in this course, um, why you're a good candidate for this course, and why this university. So it helps to just have a, have a good think about that. Research the university a little bit, but it's only a page or so long. It's not masses of detail. Why, why do you like science? Why biotechnology? Uh, why would you be a good student on this course? And why Manchester or wherever else you're applying? So I have mentioned before that it does have a, a sort of focus on the practical aspects, but it still is very broad. And like I also mentioned, because of this broad foundation, you, you may get, you will get the opportunity to switch course to other biosciences courses after the first year, if you want to. And um, one interesting point, I suppose, with it being such a broad course, it can be quite difficult to find your niche, find exactly what you're interested in. Um, but uh, I think this is a, this is, just something that will, will happen over the course of the over the course of the course if you like um and really what happened for me is during my final year project so this is the chance when you get to work in a laboratory and produce a report i discovered or came, came across a field that was really quite interesting and this is uh, the field of biomaterials and regenerative medicine and tissue engineering so they're all related you'll probably hear all three of those they're, they're semi interchangeable, but not exactly. Biomaterials really explores the interface of material science and biology. And it's, it's very interesting in that sense, because you get to learn a, a, a very broad range of things. So from uh, the, the chemistry that makes up the materials, the material properties, and how they then interact with biological materials and living organisms or organs or whatever. 
regenerative medicine is really a field of medicine, I guess, that seeks to restore and regenerate tissues to their full capacity, and it makes use of biomaterials. And tissue engineering is, is again, similarly related. Um, so essentially trying, perhaps trying to create a model of an organ or or something like that 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 can um, that can act as a, a a conduit to to research so we can research on this tissue engineered product rather than a real organ for example and it again it makes use of biomaterials uh, and it can be used then hopefully in regenerative medicine techniques which are, which will be translated to the clinic and to patients ultimately uh, so my, my project was recombinant collagen for wound healing. This involved using E. coli, a lab strain of E. coli, to produce human collagen. Uh, so this is the protein that, that ba basically a structural protein that makes up most of your body. Uh, and the idea was that we could use that collagen for wound healing. So combine it in a, in a gel, use it for wound healing. So that was really my the introduction that I had to these fields. <clears throat> so a reason you might enjoy the course and why I did is is a chance to learn more in depth. As with any program at university, you can you can obviously focus on one specific subject for three years or four years. Um, and whilst it is very broad, it's still all biology. It's still all it's still all related in that sense. So it's much narrower than, than anything you would have done at sixth form. So that's, that's a really great opportunity if you love, if you're very interested in a particular subject. Uh, and biotechnology specifically, you can learn, you can discover how biology can be applied to industry. So this is, this is very, um, I think a lot of people might be interested in this as I was because, um, but it's it's not just the theory; it's not just academic. So, how are we actually using these things to to make life better for humanity? If you want to be, if you want to be so grandiose, um, and it also helped me to decide to pursue further study. But that's something you can sort of work out as you're going along along the program. So, there is support available if you choose to study at Manchester. So financial support is automatically given based on your household income. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, and you can get up to £2,000 a year if your household income is below a certain uh, level. And a lot of people get that. It's, it's quite a high level, to be honest. Um, so that's really helpful. Um, and there's, a, there's also a smaller, a, a, a slightly smaller award for people in a, in a different band of income. So, but again, very helpful. Um, and there's also the option of doing a foundation year. So if you don't quite make the grade, you can do a foundation year. This is a year that comes before the start of the degree. Um, it extends the year, the degree by a year, but it allows you still to get onto the course you, you want if you don't make the grades. So don't rule it out if you if you've just missed the grades, you can you can likely do this foundation year and you can still do the degree that you want. Um, so a lot of people are put off applying from university because of financial issues, because of perceived debt and uh, how much money they might have to pay to go to university. But th there is no real reason to worry about this. <clears throat> if you want to pursue this degree, then you can. Um, and you will never, as I've said there, you'll never feel this debt. It's, it's, it's simply will be repaid um, uh, automatically uh, through your earnings. So, and only after you're earning £25,000 a year. Um, so you, there's really nothing to worry about. You will never see the, the fees. They're paid directly to the university. And you'll never have to pay them back yourself um, manually that will just be taken will just be taken and you won't even feel it so i re really worry about that um it's it's sort of essentially a very tiny graduate tax that's added onto your 
added or taken off from your, your pay slips only after you're earning a certain amount. And indeed, after 30 years, um, if you're still paying it off, it will be written off, so you won't have to pay any more. So basically, the point is don't let the fees that sound an awful lot put you off. So what can you do after you've done this degree? Well, you can do a lot because a lot of a lot of um, <clears throat> a lot of employers just ask for any degree these days. So even if you decide you don't want uh, to continue with a, with a scientific job, that's fine. A lot most important, most big companies will ask for a degree, so you'll have that. Um, but it might it might make you consider further study. So my project led me to do a, a master's in MRes. That's master of research rather than science, but they're they're the same essentially. And um, and so a master's is really just again you can you can specify more so and you can you can pursue something you really like. So for example, when I was doing my master's. Um, I developed an interest in 2D materials and the interface of materials and biology. So as I mentioned before, that's what, what we really call biomaterials. Um, and now I'm doing a PhD in advanced biomedical materials. So uh, uh, the 2D materials got me into looking at graphene for musculoskeletal tissue regeneration. So that just shows you how it can sort of, you, I would have never thought of this field when I first did the degree, but you discover things that you're interested in and then um, you get the opportunity to pursue them. And like I said before, jobs are available in virtually every field due to the broad skills gained on this program or any degree. So my final point is you do not have to go into science after your degree. Um, so don't really worry about that when you're applying. Don't think, well, if I do this, then I'm committed to, for the rest of my life to do a job in this field. It doesn't work like that. If you're interested in the subject, you can do it. Um, use the degree to determine whether you want to pursue science further, or you can use those transferable skills for a good job in any sector. So thank you very much for listening. Um, to my presentation. I hope it was helpful.